Hello and welcome to Friday Finds with Rob Meyer Kukan. Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining me for Friday Finds. I'm Rob Meyer Kukan, and today I'm going to serve as my own guest of sorts on the show. I'm going to speak with you about some self care tips and some tools that you may have even in your own home. So self-care doesn't have to be something that is super expensive or require super specialized equipment. It can be something that you purchase tools that are designed specifically for helping you with, um, but it doesn't have to be necessarily, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. So let me start by asking myself the questions that I ask all of my other guests. And so first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Rob Meyer Kukan. I am the owner, founder, teacher, uh, body worker at my business, which is called the Healthy Musician Institute. It is based in um, my home in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I have the distinct pleasure of working with musicians. I work with musicians in private lessons, piano, voice, and handbell. I also work with musicians as body work clients, some who have chronic pain, some who have repetitive strain injuries, and we work to do whatever we can to educate and to correct where needed and to just develop preventing injury and healthy music making habits and techniques. I also work with folks who are not musicians in my massage practice, um, but all of it is focused on teaching and educating the client or the student to um, develop a set of skills that will help them to avoid injuries in their daily life or in music making. Um, I uh, have a little bit of a history of an injury. Um, several years back, I had an injury that was unrelated to my music making, and it led me to have um, multiple months of PT, to work with several doctors, um, and specialists. And then I started to take Alexander Technique lessons. And if you haven't explored Alexander Technique, I really encourage you um, to check it out. And it is something that completely changed my focus. And that's a whole other show, but um, I did want to give you that background. I think it's important. So I don't necessarily have a product or a service that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, but I am going to talk to you a little bit about self-care in general. Self-care is so important, um, particularly when we're thinking about longevity. For musicians, we want to have longevity in our music making. We want to make music until we don't want to make music anymore. We want to be able to have our body, which is our instrument, in a place where we get to decide rather than our body telling us you're done. And so self-care will help you along the way. It helps to prevent injuries. It also helps to prevent just sort of general wear and tear and running down uh, of your instrument. And we all know, we've all experienced either an injury from something that's just circumstantial or Perhaps you've been really tired after a rehearsal and said, ouch, X, Y, or Z, part of my body really hurts. You've experienced um, possibly um, some pain from what you're doing. And if you do just a couple of steps to take care of yourself, and we're gonna talk about just one layer of doing that, um, that could be really helpful. And it could be so important in extending your lifetime of music making and your career. By the way, this also works for anyone who uses a computer, cell phone, anyone who drives a car, anyone who is not necessarily a music maker or a musician um, at any level. This is just good stuff for everyone. It's fantastic for um, massage therapists and it should be part of something that we incorporate into our daily lives, into our weekly routines. Um, in our country, we focus so much on reacting to symptoms rather than prevention, and self-care is one way to do that. Now, in my practice, I work a lot with myofascial release, and you can see on your screen here a picture of what fascia is. 
Fascia is connective tissue that runs throughout the entire body. We could do a whole show on fascia alone. But fascia is something that's really, really important for us to pay attention to. And so when I approach working with a client, I always start by working at the surface level, on a superficial level to deep, going in deeper to the muscles. So if a client comes to me and I know that there's a knot in whatever place in their body, I don't go digging right away for that knot. I know that we need to release the superficial layers before we can get to the deeper work. And so just a little bit of care and taking concern to the most used part of your bodies, bodies for making music or doing any type of activity is very important. And this can be done simply by some easy compression along the forearms. This helps to soften that myofascial layer, that fascia, and just kind of warm it up. If it feels particularly tight, then maybe do a little bit of extra work in it. And so how might you do that without knowing all of the specifics of massage technique, that kind of a thing? It's this simple thing here, a tennis ball. Some people prefer to use something like this, a racquetball, um, a lacrosse ball could work after you've done some superficial work and kind of softened those initial layers, but it's pretty dense. And so we want to have something that has a little bit of give to it. The, the racket ball has even more give to it. And the give is going to provide you with the chance to work in a more broad surface but still have some focus because of the size of this. So you may have one of these in your home. You may have one of these in your home as well. These are fantastic things to use to get to um, just that initial layer of fascia to release. And then after it's softened, maybe work on a little knot. And these things um, can be applied to all sorts of places in your body, your shoulder, pin it between your shoulder and the wall and just roll back and forth. This is something I do almost every day. Um, just by placing your palm on, to, on the ball and rolling it around really gets at these big important muscles here. You can place it gently on the side of your neck and roll up and down against the wall. You can pin the ball between your pectoral muscles and the wall and just gently kind of run it along your collarbone into the meteor portion of that muscle. And all of these things, once again, just help to relieve tension, stress, and tightness in those areas of the body. Now, I'm not saying that this type of thing should be used to eliminate any professional care from any type of complementary health professional, doctors, PT, um, OTs, massage therapists, that kind of a thing. And Rob's rule is, you've heard me say it if you've watched anything on uh, my Facebook or in other areas, that if it lasts longer than four days, if the pain lasts longer than four days or it gets worse, contact your doctor or a qualified medical professional to deal with um, and address that issue so that it doesn't get worse, doesn't end up being a situation where it's irreversible uh, or, or even greater a problem. So again, this simple tool can be used to get at those more superficial levels or layers of the skin, deep to the skin, then just beneath those layers into the muscles, and then to even get in and work on some tighter muscles themselves. Remember, low and slow. Don't go deep right away and dig in at something um, that maybe, um, what's the word, uh, might be bothering you in that moment, but rather work at it gently and slowly. Um, so that's my tip for today. That's my, the tool you may have at home. Um, I hope that that is something that is helpful for you. You can reach me by emailing me at rob at robmeyerkukan.com. That's a good way to reach me. You can also find me on Facebook, Rob Meyer Kukan. That's Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R hyphen K-U-K-A-N, Healthy Musician Institute. You can find me that way. 
Um, or there's all sorts of contact info on my Facebook page for social media or my cell phone number. Give me a text and let me know what's going on. Um, my website is, again, www.robmeyerkucan.com. Um, and that's another way to just find out about what's going on with, um, with what I'm doing, what I'm teaching, and maybe find some more helpful tips like this. I end my interviews by asking the people who I'm lucky enough to talk with for that episode to give me one word of wisdom or some words of wisdom, a piece of advice, maybe the best piece of advice you were ever given, could be silly or serious, it could be related to what we're talking about, or it could be unrelated. And you'll probably hear from me in this series more than one time. And as I was thinking about what to share today in that regard, I was thinking about uh, kind of a theme. Uh, and so you'll hear this theme from me throughout when I get a chance to turn that question on myself. Um, but the theme is never give up. And the anecdote or the story for today is I remember when I was a little kid, I don't remember exactly how little I was, but it wasn't super little, like kindergarten age or three or four. It was a little older than that, but it wasn't quite junior high. Maybe I was, you know, six or seven, maybe eight. And um, my parents had provided for my sister and I lots of opportunities to try things out, to see what we liked, what we didn't like, from music to um, experiences going to theater and concerts and to sports. I'll say in my adult life that sports is not something that stuck with me. It's not something that really resonated with me. But um, music and performance, those types of things did. But I wouldn't have had that exposure had it not been for my parents providing me with those many opportunities. I tell you that to tell you this. When I was that age that I was talking about, I was on a soccer team. And I remember for one reason or another, I can't remember if there were I think there were family members visiting, maybe my grandparents from West Virginia. And I was anxious and nervous and I didn't want to play in the game because I was afraid I would mess up or one thing or another. And I did what kids sometimes do. I had a temper tantrum and I said, I don't want to play. I'm not going to play. I would quit. Um, and my mom and dad both in their very gentle, loving, caring way said to me, Robbie, you have to make good on the commitments you make. And you made a commitment to play soccer. And if you're not in a place where you can play this game, that's fine, but you're not quitting. You have to honor your commitments. And so that has always stuck with me. Now, as an adult, we know that sometimes life and circumstances are such that you have to turn your back and walk away at times. But never give up is something that has really stuck with me. And you're going to hear different applications of that throughout when I get a chance to speak with you on my own. So there's my words of wisdom for you. Never give up. I do want to take just a second to say thank you again for joining me for this series, Friday Finds. It's been a whole lot of fun to meet and interview people and to share with you um, resources and things that I have found for just um, a whole host of things that work really well with the stuff that I'm doing for music and for performance and for body work and health and wellness. It's been really fun and I hope you're finding some value in that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel and wait every Friday for the next installment of Friday Finds. And I hope you have a fantastic day, an excellent weekend, depending on when you're watching this, or an excellent week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Join me next week as I interview handbell musician, bass bell expert, composer, and author Larry Sue as we discuss the second edition to his book, The Bass Ringer's Notebook.